Hi everybody! Today's video tutorial will be on how I made this card. Um, I copied, or should I say, I got some of the idea from a Pinterest post. And here it is. Oops. There we go. Um, and it's from Stampscapes Incorporated, and I believe they sell this stamp. And then all you do is add your colors in. So I took some inspiration from it with the tree coming down and the trees on the side and the water. So we're going to make this card today. All right, so the first thing I'm starting with is my new favorite. Again, the Bristol Smooth cardstock. This is cut to five and a quarter by four. And we're going to start with the image in the front, which would be the cabin. Now this cabin is a kitchen sink stamps um, stamp. And you can see it right here. And it comes with four layers of the cabin. It comes with some clouds or smoke, however you want to use it. It has some ducks, which I didn't even notice until just now. Um, and then it has the water. So we're going to start with the cabin. And they are numbered, so you know which one to use first. When using layered stamps, I like to start with the most solid layer first. So then I can see how to add the detail. And for this, I am going to use my Misty to make sure that I line everything up correctly. All right, and this is the first layer and I stamped it off of the page a little bit there because I didn't want it right in the middle, but you could do it on the right or the left, whatever works for you. And for the cabin, I'm using four different colors of Stampin' Up! ink. So the first one is Crumb Cake for the first layer. For the second layer, make sure that stays in there. I got these new magnets and they are super strong. So let me move this out of the way here. And these are very easy to line up. I just line up along the bottom there. Okay, the second layer I'm using Stampin' Up's Baked Brown Sugar. Layering stamps are time consuming. It does help to use some kind of a stamp positioning tool, but they are so worth it if you can um, get the details. There's a spot on this one. Didn't stamp very well. There we go. It's okay, it's a rustic cabin, so we could just say it's part of the woodwork. Third layer, adding more detail. We're going to use chocolate chip from Stampin' Up. coming together. 
And you can do this cabin in brown, in gray, whatever color you want it to be. I honestly did it in brown because that's the only ink color that I have four shades of. Okay, and then same thing, the fourth layer, you don't want to line it up with the top. Just line it up again with the lines at the bottom because this one is a little shorter. This is the final detail layer. And we are going to stamp this one in Stampin' Up's Early Espresso. Very, very dark, dark brown. So that takes care of our cabin. Okay, and then I made a mask for the cabin because we don't want the rest of the ink getting on the cabin. So the mask is made out of masking paper and you can use post-it notes, like two-way sticky post-it notes. I'm sorry, not two-way, all over sticky post-it notes. This is masking paper, which I just stamped the first image and then cut around it. I'm just gonna line that up and stick that down. Okay, and then the next thing I did was the top tree coming down so that it looked like we were looking in from the woods. And this is a penny black stamp. The name of it is Skyward. So, I mean, you can do it this way, but I'm going to stamp it this way. Now this is a, um, a red rubber cling stamp, so with the Misty, um, you're supposed to take out this foam mat when using those, so we'll take that out quick. And I just want the very top of that done, not a whole bunch. Good. All right, now that's going to hit the top there, so I might have to do this a little differently here. See how it's hanging off the edge of the misty there? So I might just, you know what, I'm just going to grab a stamping block and just stamp it. And I'm just going to use black Versamark, Versafine Onyx Black ink, and just do the top portion. All right, next part is going to be the water. And we're gonna go back to the Misty. Oops. These magnets are super strong and I normally have washi tape around them, but I, these I just got and I haven't put the washi tape on them yet. Okay, so the stamp set does come with the water. One of the things I didn't like when I did the original one was I think I did too much water, so we're going to do a little less water on this one. Okay. 
and actually that's the second one we want the first slip and for the lighter blue I am using Alta News I think this is Persian blue Persian blue or Prussian blue You want to make sure that you get right up to the edge of that mask or we'll leave a halo as close as you can get it. Okay. All right. The second layer of the water, it really doesn't matter how you line it up. It's just a detailed layer. You could, you know, try to match it up exact. I don't think I've ever been able to layer this water up exactly. I don't think, like I said, that it really matters. And that's going to be a darker color blue, which I'm using Lawn Fawn's Blue J ink, which is a uh, almost like a navy blue. And if you don't think that that's enough blue or you want more detail in there, you could always restamp it. Okay, the next thing I did were the trees. The trees are Tim Holtz trees. I don't have the original packaging for them. They are red rubber stamps. So you can see them there. All right, now what I did with the trees, scratch paper here. Again, using the VersaFine black ink. And I just used um, stamping blocks for this. I didn't feel like taking the foam out. Um, just inked up the stamps in VersaFine and then I stamped off the first layer to give it a lighter color. Now you can always use a gray ink if you don't want to do that. And then go back in full strength color and stamp that in front of your trees. all right and then we have some little birds we can put in the sky the little birds I got from the Stampin' Up! High Tide set there's a whole row of these seagulls I'm just going to use the three little birds that are on the bottom here 
So I'm just going to ink it up just those three birds. Okay, and then now is the fun part. I'm going to take it out of the misty here. And I punched out a little circle mask to make it look like the moon. And I'm just going to put that right there. And then I have some Distress ink and a little Distress color duster. This is from Judikins. And this is gathered twigs in, it's a very dark brown, and I'm just going to swipe the bottom of this. Stipple it, swipe it so that it fills it in, it makes it look like dirt. All right. All right, and then I have several Distress Ink colors here, and I tried out the new clarity stencil brushes because I wanted this not to just look like a night sky but sort of to look like um, the northern lights so I'm going to start with the lightest color which is twisted citron and you're just going to gently swipe it up and down and you could go side to side. You can, you know, really do whatever you want. Make sure when you pull down, you pull down into the water because you want it to look like that water is reflecting some of that color. And then when you feel that it looks good, move on to your next color. The next color that I have is Cracked Pistachio. And I'm just going to put that to one side just to darken it a little bit. Okay, then we're gonna go into some of our blues. We have Peacock Feathers and Blue, or Mermaid Lagoon. I'm gonna use the Mermaid Lagoon. It's nice and juicy. And again, if you want it darker, you just keep going over it until it's darker. Some wilted violet. If you have distressing sponges, you could do those too. You could use regular sponges. And just swipe it all the way up and all the way down. All right, and I think I'll do some of this on the other side. And a little bit of picked raspberry. All right, so we'll take off our little moon mask there and our little cabin. And there we go. Now, I did put the canoe guy on here, but I think he's too big to put on this one. Um, the only other thing I might do is kind of take a um, black memento marker here. And this just draw out some, some land here. And you just fill that whole bottom part in because it's dark, so you can't really see. So you just kind of sketch that in. And then if you wanted to, I'm sure I have some rock stamps somewhere where I could put some rocks around here, um, you know, and just draw like a little pathway or something. 
and color those in with some different color markers. And then like I said, there was the little ducks. We could use those since we didn't know those were there. That actually doesn't look too bad. So there is my little Northern Lights Lake picture, guys. I'll mount that on a frame and then put it on a card base. If you have any questions, put them below. I will be happy to respond. And thanks again for watching. Keep on stamping.